killed there by Hamas. For the Israelis, every Gazan man is a suspect. Several now staying at the UN school in Gaza City have been captured by Israeli soldiers and released. 34-year-old Ayad al-Attar has been reunited with his seven children after being held for three days and made to sleep outside. The soldier said to us, we're putting you in this military area in Gaza, so you die from the same weapons Hamas is shooting at us. I told him, we're farmers, we don't get involved in the war. The soldiers told us, our goal is to wipe you off the land here because you shoot Qassam rockets at us and you elected Hamas. His relative, Diab al was held for five days, during which time he said he saw between two and three hundred other prisoners. He said a soldier accused him of being a member of Hamas and threatened to kill him, but later let him go. He put his gun to my head. I said, no, we are simple, peaceful people, farmers, and have nothing to do with the fighters. Afterwards, he tied my hands, put a sack on my head and said, come with me. If there is no ceasefire, this will get even worse. International humanitarian agencies are crying out about the suffering of civilians. But neither Hamas nor the Israelis seem quite ready yet to do a deal. For the people of Gaza, there is no escape. Lindsay Hilson, Channel 4 News, on the Gaza-Israel border. Well, joining us now is the uh, Israeli historian at Oxford University, Professor Avi Schleim, uh, who indeed even himself once served in the Israeli army. Uh, Avi Schleim, as a historian, where do you place what Israel is doing in Gaza? Um, I have uh, written a book called The Iron Wall, Israel and the Arab World, which is an account of Israel's policy in the conflict since 1948. It's a long book, but I can summarize it for you in one sentence. Too little diplomacy and too much military force. And the current uh, offensive in Gaza is the climax of this Israeli tendency to shun diplomacy and compromise and to rely overwhelmingly on brute military force. What dynamics can change it? And indeed, do you look across the Atlantic for a key driver to any change? The key to Israel's intransigence in the conflict is uncritical American support. Today Israel is getting literally with murder in Gaza because there is no restraint from America. There has never been less American restraint on Israel in the history of this tragic conflict. And one recent example of this uh, blind American support for Israel is the Security Council ceasefire resolution, which Condoleezza Rice supported, made a speech in favor, and everyone thought America was going to vote for it. And yet, at the last minute, Bush and Cheney um, vetoed, didn't veto the resolution, but America abstained. That sent a clear signal to Israel that it can continue with this insane offensive. So the only thing that my change is American public opinion as a result of excessive Israeli brutality gradually changing and that would uh, weaken the power of the Israel lobby in Washington and eventually it might have an effect on American foreign policy towards the region. But well, that's well, a very long-term prospect. I, I can already read in my inbox the uh, emails from people who will be saying particularly who um, perhaps have a, a, a deep sympathy for Israel, uh, that the people who live beneath the Hamas rocket attacks will have a very different view. Uh, Israel has a right of self-defense. There were Hamas rocket attacks, uh, the attacks, and Israel had the right to defend its civilians. But here is the crucial point. This is an unnecessary and illegal war because in June of July of last year Egypt brokered a ceasefire. The ceasefire succeeded. The ceasefire was a stunning success 
contrary to Israeli propaganda. Before the ceasefire came into effect, 170 rock, Qassam rockets a month were fired from Gaza on Israel. After the ceasefire came into effect, for the next four months, the number dropped to three a month. And it was not, again, contrary to Israeli propaganda, it was not Hamas that broke the ceasefire. It was Israel which broke the ceasefire by launching a raid into Gaza and killing six Hamas men. Professor Avi Schleim, thank you very much indeed for joining us.